Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this video tutorial on chapter 12 uh, from NQ. Uh, so in the, in the last couple of lectures we developed the ISLM model. In this chapter uh, we will see how we can uh, use this ISLM model to examine uh, the impact of a change in fiscal policy and the change in monetary policy. We'll also see how we can analyze uh, IS shocks and LM shocks using this framework called ISLM model. So, uh, so uh, before I introduced you the ISLM model and I also argued that the intersection point between the IS curve and LM curve will give us the equilibrium interest rate in the economy in the equilibrium uh, income in the economy Y1 and the IS curve is given by this particular equation where output Y is a, is a function of consumption investment and government expenditure. Consumption is, uh, itself is a function of uh, disposable income and investment is a function of interest rate. And I also argue that the LM curve, it gives us all the combinations of uh, output Y and interest rate R such that uh, the money market is in equilibrium and therefore the LM curve is given by this particular equation which says that the supply of my real money balances is equal to the real uh, demand for real money balances which is basically the money market equilibrium condition so how, I also argued that R1 and Y1 uh, these these are basically uh, there's a unique combination of output of interest rate which satisfies equilibrium in both the goods market and the money market okay so we're gonna use this ISLM model today in this video a video tutorial to analyze the effects of fiscal policy which basically means uh, change in government expenditure or change in taxes and we will also use this model to analyze the effects of monetary policy that's basically means uh, that basically means a change in money supply okay so suppose that we have an increase in government purchases government expenditure increases we saw before that if there is an increase in government expenditure then the IS curve it shifts to the right and the size of this shift here given by this uh, the distance between IS1 and IS2 this is just equal to uh, the amount amount by which the PE or the planned expenditure curve shifts upward when the government expenditure rises uh, we saw this before so this this distance here it's just given by 1 over 1 minus MPC times delta G if you remember this is exactly the same amount by which the planned expenditure curve uh, shifted up, uh, I'm sorry, not the planned expenditure curve, rather the equilibrium output in the in the Keynesian cross increased. This is the same amount by which this increased. Um, so, <clears throat> so let me just correct one more, uh, correct what I said. Uh, I basically mean that the IS curve shifts from IS1 to IS2 and this, this, the size of the shift is equal to the change in, change in the equilibrium output uh, coming uh, that we can find from the Keynesian cross. So uh, this shift is the same as a change in output from the Keynesian cross. But as you see here that when the IS curve shifts upward, uh, the interest rate in the economy increases, equilibrium interest rate, the equilibrium output also increases from Y1 to Y2. But this increase in output from Y1 to Y from Y1 to Y2, is much smaller than the shift in the IS curve or this this increase in output is or this increase in equilibrium output is, is smaller than um, what the Keynesian cross would suggest. The Keynesian cross suggested that the output increased by uh, this amount, this amount which is uh, delta G divided by 1 minus MPC but the eventual change in, event, uh, in, in, in the equilibrium output once we take into account the money market interaction is actually much smaller. So why does that happen? The reason is that when we have an increase in government expenditure, it increases output, that is people's income increases. When income increases, quite naturally money demand will also increase because we know that money demand is a function of income. So when money demand increases, the banks will start charging higher interest rate. That's why the interest rate in the economy rises from R1 to R2. Now, this increase in interest rate is coming from the money market condition. But that this again fits back into uh, our goods market because investment, in, which is a component of 
of goods market, this investment is a function of interest rate. So once the interest rate increases in the money market, the investment decreases in the goods market. Therefore, although initially there, there was an increase in, uh, increase in output because of an increase in government expenditure, later on uh, what we have is a, crowd out, a crowding out of investment because of this increase in interest rate in the money market. As a result, this decrease in interest rate basically counteracts the initial increase, or this decrease in interest rate counteracts the increase in the output coming from this increase in government expenditure. As a result, this change in, in or this increase in out equilibrium output from Y1 to Y2, it is smaller than uh, the one suggested by the Keynesian cross, because remember that in, in the Keynesian cross model, we didn't have the money market. We didn't have the money market uh, in there, and therefore, the investment wasn't really connected to government uh, to a change in government expenditure. We just assumed if government expenditure increases, it has no effect on interest rate there in the Keynesian cross. But once we bring in both the IS and LM curve, we take into account the interaction between uh, the money market and 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 the LM, uh, and the goods market. Okay, so that's about an increase in government expenditure. Let's take a look at another example of uh, fiscal policy. Suppose that there is a cut in tax, so tax decreases. We know if tax decreases and consumption rises, and the IS curve shifts by the same amount as uh, the equilibrium output increases in the Keynesian cross model. We saw this before, so this, this, this shift, the size of the shift is just equal to minus MPC times delta T over 1 minus MPC. This was in fact the change in equilibrium output according to the Keynesian cross when we have a cut in tax, but that's according to ISLM model that's not the change in equilibrium output anymore because now we also have to take into account the money market condition. So what happens here is when there is a tax cut consumption rises that means people's money demand increases as well. When you want to consume more, you need more money, so your money demand increases. And as your money demand increases, banks will start charging high, higher interest rates to attract more uh, to attract more funds to their banks. So quite naturally, interest rate rises from R1 to R2 in the equilibrium. And when interest rate increases, it will depress investment. Remember, investment is a function of interest rate. So although tax cut increases in increases output. In, uh, but there will be uh, an increase. There will be a decrease in investment at the same time because of an increase in the, uh, interest rate, which happens in the money market. Therefore, the output will increase, but not as much as it would have under a Keynesian cross model, where we did not take into account uh, the feedback effect of in uh, of the money market condition. Uh, which has a ramification for, for the goods market. So basically what happens here is that when there is a tax cut, income increases. As income increases, uh, people uh, or disposable income increases. As disposable income increases, consumption rises. As consumption rises, money demand increases. Uh, people choose to hold more money to, uh, to meet their consumption needs. And as money demand increases, interest rate rises. And when interest rate rises, Firms find it more expensive to borrow money, so they will cut down their investment. As a result, the output will increase, but not as much as, as it would have uh, under a Keynesian cross model.